Hey, in this video today, uh, you may be living the RV life and you're depending on a mobile router and you just need to increase that coverage. Sometimes we get to places that uh, coverage just isn't very good. We're going to show you today how to increase that coverage. Today we're going to be putting in an omnidirectional antenna. It'll go outside, mount on the building. It'll come in here with the rest of our wires here and go right into the cradle point. We'll be replacing these paddle antennas right here. These antennas work great if you have cell towers in the same proximity as you are. In other words, just down the road, maybe a mile away. But our problem is, is we've got a cell tower here locally, but uh, yeah, the next cell tower is about five miles away. And that doesn't give us good reception with paddle antennas in case this tower goes down. All right, first let's talk about routers. You've got two different type routers that uh, most of us are familiar with. You've got your static router, residential router that comes from the cable company, comes from the phone company. It sits at home, it sits in the office. It doesn't do much, but it provides you internet all the time. Then there's the mobile router, just like this here. This is a cradle point. IBR 900 works very well. There's a lot of great features on this one here that works. Let's go back to the residential one. The residential one, they also make one that's a kind of a dual system. It's, it's a static residential router, and it's also a mobile-based uh, cellular router as well. So if your cable company, your phone company goes out for whatever reason, and they do, uh, it'll switch over to your cellular network which makes it very, very nice. The only thing that I don't like about those dual routers is that um, it seems like every couple of years or so, maybe a little bit more, what happens? <laughs> Technology changes and it becomes obsolete. So now you have that dual router that one side, if not one or the other, or both, uh, yeah, it's gonna be obsolete and you're gonna have to change the whole thing out because yeah, it's, it's not working right anymore. So that's why I like separate things. I like to have everything separate so when one of them goes out or maybe gets obsolete, no big deal. I'll, I just swap one of them out and we're good. Now the mobile router, just like this one here, there's a lot of companies out there that, uh, that make those. Uh, there's Alpha, GLINet, uh, PepLink, PepWave, Wi-Fi Ranger, MoFi, D-Link. Oh yeah, the, I could keep going on and on the list it just continues to climb. There are a lot of companies out there and there's a lot of good ones out there too. Some of them maybe not so good. If you're in the RV, uh, you know you need something decent. And I'm always one of those, spend a little bit extra money. That's why this cradle point here, I wanna say we spent about $600. If you get this off of Amazon, you don't get any support and it's gonna cost you maybe a little bit more for the 600. Now, that's uh, at the time of, of this video here, around $600, give or take. But I'm, I could have got the same thing for maybe $100, maybe $200, but the quality, is, it, yeah, daylight and dark when it comes to something like this. We need something that's rugged, something that we know is going to work every single time. And this particular cradle point has done that for us. I look at the, uh, the first responders, I look at the military, both of them have used and used and used the cradle points because of their ruggedness and dependability. They, they just need that. You know, it's, it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when they get in one of those extreme conditions like flooding, extreme heat, extreme cold. It's in the vehicle mounted up under the seat floodwaters creep into the vehicle sometimes when they're out on a call and uh, yeah it still works when it's extreme heat it still works extreme cold it still works so we need that and that's the reason we chose that and we know that the durability in the long run is going to going to be great firmware updates everything top shelf also what i like about this is it has the dual sim card so we could have we could be monitoring two different cell companies at one time. In our scenario here, uh, that's not really great for us because we only have one cell company that's close enough to us that we could receive. They have several towers around while the other companies are a little bit further away. So right now we're only using one 
um, SIM card in this unit here. But what's really nice about this unit is it does have two SIM cards, which a lot of the companies do. You can get single or dual SIM cards, uh, dual entryways into the system. So when one goes out, it automatically switches over to the other SIM card. The other neat thing that I really like about this, we're not using that either because we don't have it, but uh, you could hook in another WAN connection right here. And what that does for you, if let's just say you do have your cable company or your, uh, your phone company service coming in to the router. Well, out of that into this allows this to switch from uh, one or the other, you know, there's three three ways that three entry points here so if one fails this will switch on if this fails this switches on or, or whatever combination you want and you could do that in the GUI you could tell it how how you want things to be backed up so you never lose service so that's what's really really nice about the cradle point now the reason we are out here is because the paddle antennas on this particular unit here they work fantastic, they absolutely do. And the reason for that is that cell tower is just right, yeah, a couple of doors down. So we can take these antennas off and still get full bars because it's just right here, it's no big deal. But there is and will come a day that that cell tower is gonna go down for some reason or another. It, they have a generator, fantastic. I always look for generators at cell towers. And so we know that their power is going to stay up, but let's just say their generator fails during a power outage. Happens all the time. Then what happens? Well, this other auxiliary antenna right here is trying to search for another cell tower. Well, if it's five miles, eight miles, 10 miles, whatever away, this little antenna right here don't have enough gain, especially being inside this building here, being out in the woods as we are, there's a lot of woods around here that it's going to penetrate through all of that to really get a good signal. So we're going to have, you know, intermittent hiccuping with our audio because that's primarily what we use this for. So uh, this, this doesn't work if that cell tower goes down. And uh, which brings me to this point right here. Let's, let's go to the whiteboard and show you exactly what our scenario looks like. All right, here's how everything looks. We have a road that goes right here, running north and south. We have one over here, running north and south. We have a road that kinda goes like this, and we are located right here. Let's draw a tower symbol there. That is us, that's our building that we are in right now. Now, right here, a couple of doors down, not, not far at all, there's a cell tower right here which is perfect. We get great signal. You can take those paddle antennas off and yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't hardly, it loses one bar, I think. But uh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. And you say, wow, that's, that's great. But there's no other cell towers around anywhere. The farthest away, they're all on these main roads over here. And this is just a little county road here. There's no cell towers except that one right there, which is uh, an absolute blessing to have. But let's just say this cell tower right here goes down, you know, um, power goes out. Now they do have a, a generator power, diesel fuel, everything. So yeah, it, it, it will start up when the power goes out. And by the way, the power always goes out here. So <laughs> we test our generators quite often and they do too. But there's going to be a time that that's not going to start for some reason. The older, you know, generators get, it's, it's going to have a failure, a fault, and it's not going to crank when we have a power outage and then boom, we're, we're completely dead in the water. So there's another cell tower over here, same company. We're going to call it Verizon because that's what it is. There's one over here. Now the distance between here and here is about five miles. So we're going to say five miles. There's another cell tower way over here. And it's also Verizon, but this is about eight miles, I believe. So we're gonna say eight there, uh, between here and there. And then there's one way up here. Uh, and I think over the air, it's nine miles between here and here, between us. So as you can see with those paddle antennas, yeah, we're always gonna receive this guy here, 
But this one, five miles away, mm, iffy. Eight miles away, mm, iffy. Nine miles away, probably not. I think this is closer to 10 miles over here. But there are one, two, three, four sites that we can receive, but we can't. We can't because the paddle antennas are only gonna allow us to you know, get things pretty close to us within a, a mile or two, and that's about it. That's just the way that works, especially through the woods. This is all woods out here and uh, ground level where, where our modem is on the wall. And it's just not gonna penetrate through the building and penetrate through the trees and all that uh, to, to get that distance. So, and you might be thinking, well, hey, why don't, why don't you just do some directional antennas and you could just shoot it straight you know, to the tower here, the closest one. And we thought about that. In fact, we were going to do that, but then we thought, well, wait, 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 wait. What if this one goes out and this one goes out too? What if we have a storm? We're in Hurricane Alley. So what if we have a storm where both of them are out for some reason, but this guy up here is working and this guy over here, he's working, but this one over here, nah, this one, nah. So we've got an antenna facing this way, getting a signal with a directional antenna for no good, for no reason, it, because it won't be able to receive these here because those patterns on those antennas, you know, they go out kind of like this, kind of a cone shape like this when those directional antennas, so everything outside that cone area, you know, it, it, it looks something like this, you know, and then anything outside that cone area, it's not, it's not really gonna get. So you don't, we don't really want that. You know, we, we, we want to take that out of the equation. And so we, we've got those antennas, those, uh, they're nine dB gain antennas. So I think they're going to work well and just put them on, putting them on top of the roof line of our, uh, building out there. I, I, I think that's going to give us enough gain to be able to receive plus it being outside. That's a plus right there to get this distance, this distance, and this distance over here. So as you can see, again, yeah, this secondary antenna, no good for us. So this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna upgrade our cradle point with an omnidirectional antenna. We got two of these, one for the main, one for the auxiliary. And if you didn't know, when you, you have two antennas, a lot of people think, well, one of them is vertical and one of them's horizontal, so I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not how they work. This one right here is, uh, is your main. This is what uh, it's, it's looking for all the time. And this one right here is your auxiliary. Your auxiliary is, is also scanning and grabbing hold of another signal out there. So it's got two different signals coming into this modem right here. So when one does fail, boom, it automatically switches over and you don't do any hiccup. And it basically works just like in your your cell phone. Your cell phone does the same thing. It's always looking for two different frequencies, two different services that's trying to reach for your phone. So when you're on a call, it, it doesn't go out. Now, when it does go out, that means it couldn't find signal on either one of them. So with us, this, especially the aux right here, we want this aux to be solid, but we're going to go ahead and put them on both of them, see how the thing performs for us. Okay, we are out on the uh, roof of the building and here are the things that we're going to use. We're going to put in two of these antennas here. We'll silicone those up, screw those in to the side of the building at the top up here and it's going to work out perfect. Let me show you over here. This is actually where the lines come into the building. This is what penetrates the building from anything outside. And what we're going to do is we're just going to mount these. One's going to be uh, over here on this side and then the other is going to be over here on this side we'll probably put them about a foot apart and run them right down into this uh, penetration point right here go right into the modem plug it in see how that's going to see how it's going to work down, one to go. Hey, 
Hey, this would be an excellent time for you to subscribe to this channel over on the right hand side. See that state of Texas? Yeah, that red, that right there. Yeah, click that, subscribe. Oh, and like this video as well. And yes, comment down below. We'd love to read your comments. There we go. All we got to do now is just go down below, tie it in. All right, everything's done here. Uh, we've got it all wired up, ready to go. Antennas coming in to our cradle point, all strapped down, going up to the bridge up here, which is going outside through the penetration and connecting into the uh, antennas itself, those omnidirectional antennas. Let me tell you, when I, when I disconnected those paddles off of here, it was, yeah, it, it dropped only one bar, which is <laughs> nothing but it's because we're just so close. But as soon as I hook them back in, boom, full bars, everything is working perfectly, good signal. It looks nice and this is gonna work for us. Now, if you've got an RV and you're thinking about putting something like this in your RV, excellent choice. Yes, excellent, excellent choice. You can put this under a seat cushion, you can put it in the closet, you can put it anywhere and it's just, it's just gonna work.